on Fulton today. It's a new week following the historic 2016 election. We'll look at how the referendums will impact Fulton's future. And new public safety officers are officially sworn in and ready to protect and serve. These stories on Fulton Today, which starts right now. Welcome to Fulton Today, everybody. Fulton voters shape their future when they cast their ballots for a number of referendums. So what does this now mean and how will the county move forward? FGTV's Priscilla Ortega begins our team coverage. Priscilla? While there were many issues on the ballot, there were a few that would greatly impact Fulton County. One is Teesploss and the other is the city of South Fulton. Both were approved. Here is what happens next. For the city of South Fulton, the county attorney and county manager will work with staff to develop a transition plan. That's because services like police, fire, planning, parks, and even cable services will be transferred at some point to the new city. There are a lot of steps in the process and in the winter essentially where they can name council people and eventually they can hire a city manager and then ultimately uh, it becomes a city in April of 2017. But those transitional steps really haven't been determined and laid out 100% yet, but we're starting that process. Then there is T-Splost. The T-Splost will increase the sales tax across the county, except Atlanta, by 0.75 cents for five years. In Atlanta, the separately approved referendums will add 0.4 cents for transportation and 0.5 cents for MARTA enhancements. Each city created a transportation project list and it will be up to each city to move forward with their plans. So we've got to go back to the cities and they're working on, obviously they've got a list they developed for the T-Splice. They know how to deliver the products. They're going to come up with a game plan and a schedule for getting those products on the street from April 1st all the way to five years from now, March 31st, 2022. Both Cityhood and t Bloss will take some time to get started over the next several months. And of course, we will keep you updated right here on FGTV. Reporting from downtown Atlanta, I'm Priscilla Ortega for FGTV. All right, thank you very much, Priscilla. Meanwhile, another major issue on the ballot, Amendment 2, what many people called the Safe Harbor Amendment. FGTV's Dante Carter is in our news center, and he has more on this issue. Shania, as you recall, Amendment 2 authorized penalties for sexual exploitation and added assessments on adult entertainment to fund services for child victims. Well, the majority of Fulton voters approved this amendment, which was a huge victory for advocates who fight against human trafficking. Well, we were really, really excited. I mean, we had a lot of great community support going into the uh, election day and just sort of watching it. And we're very proud that, you know, all of the citizens stood together. This was truly a bipartisan issue. We're happy it passed with such a wide margin and we're looking forward to next steps. Because of the voters' approval and assessment will be placed on adult entertainment businesses for the purpose of funding the Safe Harbor for Sexually Exploited Children Fund. This fund will pay for care, social services, and rehabilitative services for individuals who have been or may be sexually exploited. Fulton's justice and government partners have been working collectively to get victims more resources. YouthSpark is a program through the county's juvenile court that works directly with the victims. The county is pleased the victims will now get the help they need. And the News Center, I'm Dante Carter reporting for FGTV. Thank you very much, Dante. And here now is a look at how some of the other Fulton County races fared.
Now, to get complete election results, you can visit the Fulton County website or the Secretary of State's website. Now, the next group of individuals did not have to be elected to get their jobs, but they did have to be sworn in. Left, 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 right. You're looking at the latest 2016 mandate class at the Fulton County Public Safety Training Center. The men and women are with various law enforcement and public safety agencies. After rigorous training and class instruction, they each met the basic criteria to become officers. Training was strenuous on the mind and the body. However, we all pitched in and made sure everyone got through. Um, studying was hard, to say the least, next to physical activities, but we all got through. The number one thing that I told them was for them to remember that they are the community, that they are the citizens, not to forget that just because you put this badge on means that you're something different. And I think that that's been lost in, in some cases over the years. In the group was also 28 basic jail certification candidates as well. Congratulations to them all. Well, Fulton's county manager is on the road again. Dick Anderson visited the county's housing and community development team. The manager's rolling road trip gives him an opportunity to hear from his frontline staff and to give them information on issues happening in their respective divisions. We just finished meeting with the board of commissioners talking about all people are self-sufficient, one of the six strategic areas. Well, this group is right in the center of all of that area, all people are self-sufficient, because they're working on finding solutions to housing and homelessness, as well as the development in different areas. The county manager has visited nearly half of Fulton's over 40 departments. And still to come on Fulton today, homeowners go to boot camp to get ideas on how to keep their community strong and safe. Details in our district by district coverage next. Fulton takes a week to honor its veterans and homeowners go to boot camp to better their communities. Here's this week's District by District Coverage. We begin with Chairman John Ease as he joins members of the clergy for the UNCF Call to Commitment Faith Leaders Breakfast. Held at the historic Pascal's restaurant, the group came together to discuss how they are making youth a priority in their congregations. Well, United Negro College Fund is incredibly important. I'm a product of an HBCU Morehouse College, in fact, a proud graduate. And so I have a personal testimony in terms of how these institutions do a lot in terms of education, but also character development and a call to service. Through fundraising efforts, the Atlanta United Negro College Fund local office works to help underrepresented students to become highly qualified college graduates. District 4 seniors join the countywide celebrations in honor of our nation's veterans. Participants of the Helene Mills Multipurpose Facility recognized its members who served our country in the armed services with their very own veterans breakfast. And of course, each of the veterans ate free. Today's program was a real blessing. Uh, we had an opportunity to honor veterans who had served in the military. And it was an opportunity to reflect back over how we served and the things that we did and the experiences that we went through. I think any Veterans Day program is great because it honors the people that were willing to commit their lives to the country. Fulton County hosted a number of events this month to honor county veterans. Many of the participants at the various senior centers have served in the armed services. District 5 Commissioner Marvin Arrington Jr. hosts his second annual HOA boot camp. Joined by a number of county commissioners from neighboring jurisdictions, the elected officials all shared how they are working to give communities the help they need to keep their communities safe. We want to protect Georgia homeowners. There are certain things that transcend county lines. And so we're proud today to have partnered with 10 commissioners from eight different counties uh, in order to uh, help, again, protect and educate Georgia homeowners. A number of South Fulton communities participated in the day-long sessions. Most of them are leaders in their respective homeowner associations. 
The value of the uh, Georgia HOA Alliance HOA Boot Camp is to educate residents that live in community associations. Uh, so it doesn't matter if they're in condos, townhouses, uh, apartment complexes, or traditional HOA. The value of this education is that it prepares all of your communities to manage and operate in a more effective manner. Homeowners participated in a number of panel discussions about the best practices of managing HOAs. The event was free once again and was held at the Georgia International Convention Center. And finally in District 6, it's perfect weather for the Cliftondale Fall Festival. Families enjoyed the many treats and games at the event held at Cliftondale Park in South Fulton. But it may have been the senior dance contest hosted by Commissioner Emma Darnell that created the most fun. I thought it was great. I, the seniors kind of turned it out this morning with Commissioner Darnell, so that was a great thing. I think it is very nice. Uh, this is, I've been every year that they've had it since I've been out here. And uh, it's a great event for everyone, adults, children, everybody. So uh, people need to come and see what's in their area. I want to say congratulations to the Cliftondale community for coming together on this beautiful, beautiful day. I'm just so pleased to have had an opportunity to share with the seniors in that dance contest, but I want to thank everybody. It's a wonderful, wonderful day, and as long as we're together, we can get it done. From the cotton candy to the friendly basketball games, the event was well attended. The Cliftondale Community Club hosted the second annual event. And up next on Fulton Today, important information for those who need to sign up for health care. Stay with us. Open enrollment for the Affordable Health Care Plan is underway and the deadline is fast approaching, but which plan is best for you? FGTV's Lynn Vaughn has a story of how navigators are helping people to find out. The lowest plan for you is 250 Coverage, oh, yeah. deductibles, costs, these are some of the factors one has to consider when choosing a plan on the healthcare marketplace. But a one-on-one -on -one session with a marketplace navigator at one of our health centers can help. The most common question is, uh, what's the cheapest plan? Um, how much is the tax penalty? Uh, can I afford it? According to the U.S. Department of Housing and Human Services, more than half a million Georgians took advantage of the health care marketplace last year. Insure Georgia, which partners with Fulton County, can explain how qualified residents can help pay for health insurance using a tax credit. Oftentimes people think they can't afford it or it's going to be affordable or the prices are going up, but most of the cost is absorbed by the tax credit and paid for by the government. Plan prices are based on income, but navigators say most get coverage for about $70 after the tax credit. But the prices do range and it is based on your income, what your tax credit would be. Navigator services are available at the College Park, Adamsville, Center for Health and Rehabilitation, and Neighborhood Union Health Centers on the schedule you see here. The deadline to enroll on healthcare.gov is January 31st. Those who are not insured and don't sign up may face a tax penalty. Reporting for FGTV, I'm Lynn Vaughn. Thank you very much, Lynn. Now the navigators will be on site at the Adamsville Regional Health Center on Tuesdays and available by phone at 866-988-8246. Smokers who finally want to kick the habit can take advantage of the Great American Smokeout. Every third Thursday in November is recognized as a day where smokers can ditch their cigarettes. Officials with Fulton's Partnership to Improve Community Health Program, or the PITCH Program, says that quitting even for just one day is a good step toward a healthier life. If a person stops smoking within 20 minutes, their heart rate and their blood pressure can return back to can be lowered and if within 12 hours the, car uh, the carbon monoxide in their blood will actually be reduced. According to the American Cancer Society, cigarette smoking rates have dropped significantly from 42% in 1965 to just 17% in 2014. But cigar, pipe, 
hookah and other tobacco use is on the rise. Pitch employees say smokers can quit by calling the Georgia Quit Line, which offers counseling and nicotine replacement therapy to residents 13 years old and older. Now the number to call, 877-270-STOP. That's 877-270-7867. Counselors are available 24 hours a day. Well, this week, families are getting ready for the big Thanksgiving feast, but there are several food safety tips that you should be thinking about right now. The director of the county's cooperative extension service says that each year, residents call them with questions about how to properly thaw their frozen turkey. We recommend um, there are three ways. There are, you can do the water bath method, you can thaw the turkey in the refrigerator or you can follow the microwave, uh, your microwave's manufacturer's instruction and do that. When you thaw with the water bath method, you are going to put it, the turkey in a water bath and um, change the water out every 20 minutes until it is thawed out. Do not thaw your turkey on the countertop. And when it comes to cooking the bird, make sure you check the internal temperature to make sure that the bird is done. You know when your turkey is cooked when you use a handy dandy meat thermometer and um, it reaches 165 degrees in the thickest part of the um, bird. It is usually right where the thigh is and there's always, there's sometimes a little red um, pop-up tab that's in there but you can just stick the thermometer in there. And if you cut the turkey to check to see if it's done, you may miss um, some, some of the pieces, parts that are not completely cooked um, and you won't know the temperature of it. And finally, do not let food sit out for more than two hours. The U.S. Department of Agriculture says bacteria grows most rapidly in temperatures between 40 and 140 degrees Fahrenheit and can double in number in as little as 20 minutes. If you have questions about properly cooking your turkey, just give the Cooperative Extension Service agents a call. The number 404-332-2400. And still to come on Fulton today, how a nearly two-ton cow turns a library into a farm. Stay with us. Well, county leaders put their money where their support is. Before the start of the True Colors production of Proof, Fulton's chairman handed over a more than $34,000 ceremonial check. The funds are a part of the county's contract for services grant from the Arts and Culture Department. This is one way that the uh, county can provide essential funding for uh, arts groups to continue their, their artistic activities to be able to give to the quality of life and, and contribute to the quality of life for our residents here in uh, Fulton County. The managing director for True Color says the money will help fund many projects, including monologue competitions at high schools. The arts are a right for all of our citizens, and it takes, it takes a village. It takes all of us to be able to produce great theater and have impactful conversations. County leaders say plays from the True Colors production company have brought in about 55,000 people to the Southwest Arts Center Theater in the past year. And finally, one of our favorite stories of the year. Dozens of children get their first experience with a real live cow at, of all places, the library. All right, so the very popular mobile dairy program set up at the Central Library so that children could see the three-year-old cow named Maggie. The children were able to get within a few feet from Maggie and saw the modern way to milk a cow by using a machine. Now, this new school process takes about five minutes and produces about four gallons of milk. Most of us are fourth generation removed from dairy farms or from farms, so it's a great um, opportunity for them to actually see the milk coming out of the cow into the jar and what uh, little process it goes through to actually be able to drink it. The coordinator explained how Maggie has a baby every year so that she can produce milk, but the cow also gets a two-month vacation a year just to rest. The mobile dairy farm travels to libraries and schools across the state and borrows cows from local dairy farmers along the way. For more information on other events at the library system, just go to AFBLS.org. Now that is show and tell. 
Before we go, our reminder that we'd like to connect with you online. Check us out anytime on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and our YouTube channel. Well, that does it for this edition of Fulton Today. Thank you so much for watching. Join us each week for news around and about Fulton County.